Howdy, folks. This is Ted Lasso, your favorite optimistic American football coach turned English football coach. And welcome to the Richmond Way, a Ted Lasso rewatch podcast. So grab your biscuits, put on your AFC Richmond scarf, and let's embark on this journey together. Please welcome back to the Richmond Way. Uh, joining me tonight, your host, your captain, Michael Soren, is Bonnie Lady Hackmore Williams. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Best intro ever. And Hi. Mark, I don't know any other characters' names besides Ernest Vibber. Hello. <laughs> that was from an off screen conversation that stuck with me. So we'll just let those in the know laugh and those who don't know figure it out. Mm -hmm. and let us know if you do. And for those of a younger generation, Slinky Dog says hello. <laughs> younger? I don't know. Maybe somewhat in the Make same. Make it Toy Story uh, what, 5. Whatever. Let's just go to the, to the <laughs> next thing. <laughs> that is our generation. Did you realize that? Well, moving on. <laughs> okay, Ernest. Sean Hunter's dad. Make it, I'll make an Slinky earnest Dog effort because they, they were friends. This is a wild tangent. We're only like what, like a minute into this. <laughs> we're, we haven't even like started. We're keeping people on their toes. They don't know what we're, to expect now. We're all about that that first thirty seconds to a minute retention when you watch our mm -hmm. videos here. It's all about so, the clickbait. Yeah. This video will be titled Quick "Jim Varney." Was he really Slinky Dog the entire time? Question mark. Just title it Vern. Vern to Vern, Vern, Vern. There you go. The Varney way. Nice. Anywho, this is our uh, fourth episode or fifth episode. That's, I don't yeah, know. Number. The numbering convention gets strange. But fourth we're watching the fourth episode, of Ted, episode of Ted Lasso yeah. entitled For the Children. Now, in For episode, the Children. There you go. There's no golf in this episode, though. It's four with a U, not an E. Oh, it's four. Unless me. you can't spell. You said it's four. What are we you. doing for the children? What's who's happening on, here? Who's on first? For the children, we're keeping them up at night with this podcast. That's what we're doing. Or as Rob Williams, Robbie Williams would say, we're doing it for the kids. We'll get there. Let's hear it for yeah. the boys that too all right anywho yeah in this episode the brief elevator pitch would be rebecca's hosting a fundraiser and it goes awry it's true as they do and <clears throat> the longer version she is hosting a fundraiser i'm pretty sure her and rupert hosted it every year but it felt more like it was hers and rupert just kind of was there um She's nervous. She's all wigging out because she wants it to go great. She wants it to be better than years past because of Rupert's involvement. Ted's got to squash some beef between Roy and Jamie so he can have unity in the locker room. Nate's still uh, gaining confidence. And we get a little more uh, Keely Jones action. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike's favorite. Your character. favorite. <laughs> it's very true. It's a callback. I see her value. I still would have cut her from the script if I was the writer. Anyhow. Well, I will Eight say, table four was the boring table, but episode four was not a boring episode. No, it was not. Do you, do you think that was a meta joke, maybe, that they, they slid in there? I don't know. It kind like of it made might. me think of, like, that scene in The Wedding Singer when they're like, and the mutants at table nine, when he's at the wedding right before he has his little breakdown, but... There were no mutants. It was just Higgins at table four. Yeah. Which is not boring, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing I like I saw, too, when I rewatched this, since Apple TV has, like, all the dates when these first, like, dropped, was I, f I forget that, like, these aired, like, an, or, like, I guess not aired, but, like, became available on, like, this was, like, August, like, late August of 2020. And mm -hmm. just forget, like, that it, like came, that's not really four years like, ago long ago yeah it feels much longer because like 2020 feels like that was like four years in and of itself that was four so, years for one year yeah, yeah that, 
that was the year of dog years where it was like 2020. It was that was that was a, that was a decade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I forgot about that too, and I looked at the air date and I went, "Oh," because I wasn't watching it then. Same. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Oops. All berries. Anyways. So, <laughs> moving on, forward, if you will. Onward, forward. Forward. I'm just going to do the four jokes all night. I'm so sorry. So, on a scale of one to five, where do we rate this episode? <laughs> well, two times two. On my. I give it a four. On my serialized <laughs> account, I two gave squared. it. Uh, I gave it five Fair stars. Of eight. 16, rather. Can't do and math. serialized is essentially the, the TV version of Letterboxd. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Anyways, yes. I gave it a, a five. Although I'm, I'm, I'm usually a generous reviewer. I guess. You're not no, stingy I'm, with the stars? Yeah, You're I'm not, not, I'm not Armand White, as it were, when it comes to reviewing things. Yeah. I think I would yeah. actually give it a five if I wasn't doing four <laughs> jokes. I thought it was a really good episode. It is a solid episode, which my main thought about the episode was not a whole lot transpires, but a whole yeah. lot happens. I was going to say that it's like a, it's a yeah. very dense episode. But again, like you're saying, like not a lot of it's easy to like break down into like a very small window of like this happened this happened this happened that was the episode but it was actually a lot of this big thing happened this big thing happened this big thing happened so yeah yes. yeah whole that lot really of good character yeah. reveals mm -hmm. traits yeah like I, okay biggest one i think was uh, kind of inversing what we've seen of Rebecca so far. Because mm -hmm. she went from this cold, calculated character trying to destroy the football club and just being, for lack of a better word, wretched yeah. towards everything. To Alath, no fury. Yeah. Yeah. Now she's just incredibly insecure. Not yeah, sure of herself. You're going through all the dresses, and, and it's just like and complete one eighty. Like, oh, I can't pull that off or that off or whatever. Which, yeah. speaking of that, we'll just jump into the dresses. I mean, that's not Let's normal how you put one on. You kind of put your when legs Ted... in them, and then excuse well, me, jump... I jump I mean, into that, my that dresses. That does seem like the fun way. That does seem like what about jumpsuits? Jumpsuits, ironically, you mm -hmm. you do step into those. What about pajamas with the flap in the back? You jump through the How do you flap. get into those? <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. That, 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 no, that is where you Dresses. go from the flap. Dresses. That word you said to begin that sentence. Then why do they have buttons in the front sometimes? Well, you said butt. And I was like, that's where that's where the that's flap the is. That's the obvious way. <laughs> Anyways. Onward. Forward. Forward. <laughs> Ding, Ted ding, ding. Tell, like, comp compliments Rebecca on the dress. And he says, you are wearing that dress. I always thought that was a... Right back at you, boss. <sighs> I had a hunch you were going to pick this dress. And may I say, you are wearing the heck out of it. connotation. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong there? So, if he said, my opinion, if he said that dress is wearing you... It's like, you got to wear it. You can't let it wear you. I saw that as a positive. Okay. I, said, I forgot the show. Maybe it's Scrubs. It could be. Bill Lawrence. Maybe. Because I think it was uh, the nurse, not Carla, the other Sarah one. Sarah Chalk? No, she was a doctor. Oh. I don't know. Wow, Mark. <laughs> For, I forget her name, and it's going to bother me now. But at Carla and Turk's wedding, she comes up to him and goes, girl, you are wearing that dress. And like, it was like an insult as she walks by almost. So that's where I'm getting that reference from, which ironically was Bill huh. Lawrence as well. Yeah. Maybe it just depends on how you say it. 
Because if you say, if you look at somebody like, wow, great job versus wow, great job. Same words, different intonation, different context, different delivery. Yeah, that's true. I don't think Ted would be mean about that, though. No, I didn't get that from him. I was just surprised. Yeah. I always had that in my head as a, a negative thing. Let's do a poll. I want to see who who how other people hear that because now I I don't want to say that to somebody who's going to take it the wrong way. <laughs> we will do a poll. Like, wow, you are wearing those headphones, Mike. <laughs> That's right. They are not wearing me, despite what it looks like. Yeah, However, I, I yeah, it was just I just something I was always thought was a negative thing. I just didn't know if you guys had that same opinion or information i don't think i thought of that just because i feel like basically everything that ted says is usually coming from like positive like a sincere place and he he doesn't normally say stuff like out of uh, well he does to a certain person in this episode but that person earns the mm -hmm. way that he speaks to them because he knows who that like he he can tell who that person is when he's talking to him but do, do we want to name who that person is? Yeah, Rupert. Yeah, you know. <laughs> the Rupert, Rupert. reveal. Yeah. As always, no hanky panky unless the player signs a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darling. What a... I was going to ask you guys back, that too. Just was this the photo? first time? I couldn't remember if it was, we saw him in person yet at all. Just, yeah, not... like in like in a physical presence, not. In a picture hanging on the wall in the the club. This is when he makes his glorious entrance, which I miss the original pictures and things on the first watch. So my like, I thought this was the first time he showed up because the first time I watched the show, season one, I was you know working and like looking up and listening to it and doing that just because I needed to multitask. So that, you know, so when I saw him show up, I'm like, oh, my God, there he is. Like, I didn't know it was Anthony Stewart Head, who was also Rupert Giles on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, I needed an excuse to talk about it. I was going to say, you have a whole different <laughs> connection to, to him than, than Mike. Well, yeah. I, I don't know about Mike. Mike, have you watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I've never watched right. Buffy outside so, of the movie. So, that inspired Bonnie, the show. You're, you're the it's only one like the show. on this show that has seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So we will let you. Well, we're not going to let you. We don't need to let you. you no, because we'll I don't do the whole hour. Four yeah. seconds. Okay. One. Rupert sucks <laughs> on Ted Lasso, but he's great on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Same character name. He, he did what on Ted Lasso? Rupert. He sucks. On Ted Lasso? Yes. Well, that was in the extended that, is cut that got deleted for TV. <laughs> he sucks on this quote. show, specifically. He's Taken out of context. One of the, and I put... Listen, I know he's such a piece of crap on this show, but when I tell you he's one of the gems on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I mean it. And I put that in all caps in our notes because I meant it every word. I mean, he, he except you used a different four letter word. Well, can we say that four letter word? Four letter word? <laughs> I told you I'm going to keep that going. Well. Is, is that four letter word talking about seeing somebody on a, a Tuesday of next week? No. Okay. No. I didn't, yeah, no, I, I don't, don't generally use that word, at least not publicly. Yeah, no, you he, can say it's uh, a hit, starting with S. Oh, yeah, you, I think you can say that. I've okay, said great. worse, because it's 15 minutes. He's a piece it's... of shit. <laughs> it's great, yeah. but he's such a good actor. Um, if you're not familiar with his work, but for me, growing up, the last, okay, so Buffy premiered 20, as of uh, recording this, 27 years ago yesterday. We are old. So wow. it was, was very 11? weird for me to see him old on this show <laughs> versus seeing him originally and just re-watching those episodes. And then I see him on here and it's like, ah, when did, when did That's this happen? That's the appropriate happen? reaction, though. That's what they wanted from you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's so great on Buffy. He's a great actor. But to play two different characters with the same name, <laughs> who are the complete opposite end of, ends of things, it's incredible. So if hey, you loved Tony him on Danza here. Tony Danza did it. Yeah. Just go watch Buffy. Just trust me, everybody. Go watch it. It'll change your life. That's all. That's all. Unfortunately, we can't sponsor Buffy. It's a five-letter word. 
No. But she was in good shape, which is the word buff, and that has four <laughs> letters. It's only going to get worse, folks. I'm so sorry. Forward. Forward. What say you, Rupert, Sans Beard, or with Beard? Which one's more menacing and scary? Ooh. Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I thought he was creepy in this episode for sure. I think, like, at least, like, with how, like, not to give, I guess, not to give too much of, like, his char- like, kind of character arc on the show, but I think. What they try to do, like with giving, not to say that people with beards are evil, because you know, <laughs> beard coach beard isn't evil. <sighs> coach beard isn't evil. I mean, I mean, and how mere, come evil Troy that and evil we Abed know of so I, far? I mean, mere beard could be evil. We don't know. Well, I know I'm not evil, but and I know that Sylvie <laughs> over here with a beard isn't evil. So, anyways, from. Uh, I, I I like how they kind of like show like like him like growing the beard over time. I think it's just kind of supposed to be like I don't know him like more. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're overthinking it. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's a good look. Oh, I'm blurry. There we go. I think it's a good look for him. Either way. But I do understand make him at the debut clean shaven um, where you know where you stand with him, but maybe you still think, oh, well, he can't be all that bad. Clean shaven and charming and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I... And then I think that, yeah. Yeah, no, I think actually, like, with, I guess within, like, the way that within, like, the television medium of, like, how it's usually conveyed. Or like films, it's like, oh, someone's got a like a big beard. They're usually like depressed or uh, something like that, or like they've been through some like huge rough patch. And then to kind of show them like cleansing themselves or like, you know, <laughs> starting anew, they use that as like a visual form of showing like, oh, they've now stripped that part of like their past off by shaving the beard off. So it's like with him, it's kind of like re- like reversing it. metaphor. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so me- meta four. There you go. Ah, beat me to it. Shit. But yeah, so maybe it's just like four letter word. The reverse beard thing. The reverse of beard. Like what's usually that, that conveyed. sounds dirty, Mark. I mean, that beard probably did that with Jane. Maybe Jane also <laughs> in this episode for the first time. Jane, we do get to see Jane briefly playing Good the imaginary for twist. him. Yeah. And I believe she moves her queen, the King Four. To, to Rook Four, yeah. A Rook Four, there you <laughs> go. Yeah. But, like, the the other thing that that I liked in here, too, I think, at, like, at the beginning, I think still was, like, when they were on the pitch with, during, like, practice, and Ted is talking with, it's, it's like, after, uh, like, with Roy and Jamie kind of have, like, the fight within the the locker room and when they're out there, there's like uh if you know what i'm thinking of don't you know what i'm thinking about right now west side story you know it sharks and jets how you think these fellas can solve their problems with a dance off at a gymnasium <laughs> of course if memory serves griffin bernardo ended up getting knifed to death at that particular event he's like west side story so that's the, like yeah. the first time we get like one of our i don't i don't think it's the first time I don't recall, but like it's one of like our one of our first like musical theater references on the show that which Kinky we'll Boots is of. the first one. Yeah, Kinky Boots. Um but yeah, then you like then Wicked. Know, yeah. I think. Uh yeah, then we like, you know, just get like a bunch of references to like the West Side story story, like with um it's like a whole bunch of jets and well, sharks Nate. out here. And, and Nate <laughs> played Anita or the backup Anita. He's like, Oh, I went to an all boys school. <laughs> it's like another another onion layer the onion whereas we i love about that like her. uh-huh and ogres have layers i loved all these little things that just endear you to nate so much and that's what makes it hurt and just and and just ted being so 
encouraging and like, I want to get to know this guy more because nobody else is like, I, that's something that I absolutely love is seeing that like, oh, Nate's going to be my date. We're going to sit at table eight. Like that whole thing was, was just so nice. I love Which that. Which eight is a multiple of four. Of four. <laughs> Look at us doing math too. <laughs> my eighth grade math teacher would be so impressed. In the opening, do you, do you remember if in the episodes before this one, if it said Nate the Great on the, the stadium seats? Because I, I noticed it says Nate the Great in the, the like the opening in this episode on the stadium seats. And I'd have this, to go look. And this I don't is where recall. Ted says that, like Nate the Great. Uh, I thought he said Nate name. the Great in the previous episode. Maybe. Uh, I thought so too. I yeah. think he says it to and Trent he's establishing. Okay. Yeah, he did. He did. I'm just wondering if it, if that's been on that seat since like the pilot episode, or if it's like if if like watching these seats during the season, if like they're adding like these little bits of graffiti to the, the seats, that might be something to to double check. Just because I have to watch for it. Yeah, I just noticed that eagle-eyed listener we watching. or somebody watching should tell us if that's the case. Yeah. Let us know. Indeed. Let us know. What do you guys think? I think it's an interesting concept that I'll have to maybe pay attention closer to. Mm-hmm. Because I usually cool. skip past the opening credit thing. Yeah. <laughs> I you do want to go back skip to... skip past the opening credits for? Buffy. That's all. Continue. <laughs> oh, Buffy. Stab that in the heart and get it over with. Just kidding. No, it's going to keep coming back up. Sorry. But... Before we get them on the pitch, and they're fighting in the locker room, what is with the start of that fight, where they just place their foreheads on each other and push each other back and forth? What is that fighting style? Like two two male Not ram American? male rams going after <laughs> each just... other. They're just like visually, because... it looks cool, but. Yeah. In practice, it's a dumb way of fighting. There might there because might have also been like episode a rule, before that he like, like just wails Colin in the face with his head. Uh, like, oh yeah, he headbutts him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because they even make a callback to that in this episode. Yeah, I don't know. It just it was so strange. I don't know. I also wanted to say the word forehead to get the count up. Forehead. And now now you're just for sing it. No, that was forced. That, yeah. I, I'll give that one to you. That was good. You beat me to it. No, it was, the fight scene is interesting to me just because it happens like immediately because they're down. It's not it's like halftime. It's not even at the end of a game. And you could, they just wanted to show that complete division of leadership. Yeah. And then. Well, this and this is one of my. It also builds on to some. Go ahead. I was just gonna say this is one of my favorite quotes. I'll just take it from my list there now. Is that where like Ted says to to Beard, he's like, "What what what's my rule about? Tell these guys what my rule about Fight Club is. No Fight Club. No Fight Club. Right? <laughs> I also wonder if that delivery was kind of supposed to be a character reveal of how Beard might have been uncomfortable with what was happening. Mm. Right. More, not more so just a funny delivery but I, I'm, maybe I'm reading too much into it yeah this is a good beard kind of sight reveal episode too or there's like tiny little like layers peeled off of beardism in this episode too <laughs> as also his hair uh, spoiler by the end is like crazy at least the hair that's around his horseshoe because uh much much like myself, Brendan Hunt is follically challenged in certain areas of his head. Follically challenged. He's got but, a but one, two, on three, face. four, five. <laughs> He's, got, more, on his he's got it where it counts. More, more than Charlie Brown <laughs> or Doug Bunny. Who only has about four strands on his yeah. head. <laughs> I think Doug Bunny's got maybe Man, four as stop. well. So many pictures and references I'm going to have to look up here. God damn. Mm -hmm. Now now that we know that you edit this stuff, we're going to we're just, we're just make, make the... I can stop at any time, you know. That's what they all say. 
Question for you guys. Uh Uh-oh. Possible answer? No, not a bad one. Just something that I I even tried looking it up because I wanted to see if other people thought about it and I didn't see anybody talk about it. And again, I want to preface this. It it might be somewhat controversial, but while we're on the topic of beard, um, do you... Dude, I don't remember if they ever talk about this. I'm pretty sure they don't because I feel like I would remember. But do you think he might be on the spectrum? Parmy feels that Ted and he are both on it. And again, but, this is not, there's no judgment with this, but no. it is just an observation. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. This is not, this is just something I thought of watching him this time around and going, huh. And I don't know if it's intentional or if it's just me having experience in that world is maybe seeing some of this and wondering if it might be part of it or if it's just unintentional or if that's just something that's more universal. I don't know. But I wanted to ask you guys. Yeah, I think like he might be like slightly coded as like neurodivergent a little bit, like mm-hmm. like within this, just especially like just with like how like with him and Jane playing chess like that like how they can recall like a whole chess board and like where all the chess pieces are and just yeah. play the the game that way i mean but i mean and she says like let's go dance and he's still doing it yeah. that was what made me go yeah. huh and i never thought about that before game, it was only until this rewatch mm-hmm. yep. it's, it's definitely a possibility yeah 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do yeah, not know. I would be curious to see if other people thought about that too. And maybe do we still think that by the end, if that was coded, if that was intentional, I think that's great. I think that's very, very cool, especially now that more people are talking about that and, and there is more representation in that area. If they didn't mean it to, that's cool too. That's something that maybe somebody can get out of that and not feel as alone or they can see something of themselves. I don't know. That's just just some thoughts that I had. There's a, a it's definitely worth Reddit a conversation for sure. Uh, thread mm-hmm. about about that and Coach Beard. I just I just looked it up really quickly. <laughs> oh, I was looking and I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it. Yeah. Good old Reddit. Okay, well, good old Reddit. I guess I'll have to go look at that and read it later. I have to go read it later ah anywho anywho forward forward so a lot happens a lot does happen but not much takes place or Mm -hmm. flip that reverse it something like that because the whole point is they're trying to get through this banquet which one funny thing is rebecca screaming out the window that beard can't check both entrees (laughs) yeah the chicken and the steak (laughs) Mr. Two Entrees. Oh, I thought that was so funny. That's when we first hear he's... It was pretty comical. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first time Even in the serious moments. That she yells, hey, or hey, Ted, out the window, too. Which, spoiler, this kind of becomes like a thing. Oh, yeah. But I think... Laverne, that's the nurse's name. Oh, oh, it yeah, just hit me like a ton of bricks. But not, Once we stop thinking about yeah, it. And now I'm sad because now I remember what happens with Laverne on on so things. Laverne again comes back. Yeah, but <laughs> sorry, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. That was her name. That's okay. And why not blurt it out? Why not share with the world? Share it with the world because you know it's going to be bugging somebody else too. Somebody stuck in traffic who can't look it up and they're like, What's her name? And then you're going to blurt it out and they're going to feel such a sense of relief. They're either going to crash their car screaming yes or have crashed texting trying to figure it out. So saving lives here. Don't foreshadow terrible things to happen to someone, Mike. Yeah. Depends (laughs) on the person. Oh, man. Who do we feel like? Go yeah. Ahead. Nope. Oh, you I go. was going to say, like, I feel like this is a really good Rebecca centric episode. Me personally. Agreed. I feel like there there's other things happening in it, but like, this is a really good Rebecca episode. Yes, yeah. I agree. Because it does show like the complete opposite side of her and humanizes her more and makes you like her more. Yeah. 
I think you love her by this point. Mm. I did. Unlike with Jamie Tart, who just continues to be a D bag. God. Every episode I've put in the notes. God, Jamie sucks so badly. I think it is in every episode thus far. I mean, far. I have put that in our notes. He's just, uh He's like, just rotten, truly. <laughs> looking for, <laughs> for a suit that has graffiti on it. Just so I was like, really? <laughs> I don't know why that just bugged me. I don't know. Because everything, look... when you don't like somebody, you're just like, ah, screw that guy <laughs> and his stupid suit. Yeah. But we like, also kind of get more of more to Keeley in this episode as well. Mm -hmm. Not that she reveals herself to be useful in my book yet. <laughs> but you do get more and you can see, like, I do see her value as a character to those around her. But I feel bad because I feel like she's just there for everyone else and nobody's there for her. Mm. Like, why, like, obviously that may change. We won't foreshadow anything. And I think I've seen this. And I think you said that in a different episode where she's essentially like the English Ted. Yeah. She's like the English Ted where like, she's, she's there helping out everybody else, but no one is really helping her. Mm -hmm. Although like Ted, I mean, her and Ted kind of help each other a bit, like within like this season. They're the same season. person. Yeah. So it, they're never going to help themselves. So it's good that I guess that they have, it's like, a, that's a good, uh, like male, female, uh, friendship on the show too. Um, mm -hmm. that I think is, is cool that like, that, and that one's not usually highlighted that as, as often as like some of the other relationships in the show, but I think like they have a really yeah. very good platonic friendship that like builds and um, throughout like the rest of the show too. But I mean, not so much in this episode, there's, they don't have too much going on together in this one. Um, but yeah, just like just saying that, like, I do think like her and Ted are very similar, like within that kind of conceit that they both are helpers, but not, usually the helped yeah yeah no way of sad. phrasing it better that's a great that's way a great way of phrasing it because <laughs> it makes because it makes sense like you do, yeah. you do more, more of keely, of keely in this episode, episode. You, get more, you get more yeah her value her value to others. to others but not so much not so much yourself now now uh -huh. Uh -huh. I might challenge I might you. I might challenge you on that a little bit. By the end of it, so and it kind of ties into the whole idea of this being a very Rebecca episode. I put one of one of my notes. Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we're seeing these women, you know, Keely and Rebecca, in these shitty relationships, ex relationships, and they're taking those steps to take their power back from Jamie and Rupert, and they end up laughing and bonding together we're just we're going all over talk by the end of the episode i think ending up for herself yeah we're just we're just talking we're just vibing um but i think keely's standing up for herself and breaking things off with jamie like officially officially at mm -hmm. this point um i think was absolutely doing something for herself and that was rebecca indirectly helping her yeah. Like Rebecca saying, here's what I learned. Like, have you ever dated one of these? And Rebecca kind of took on an, a big sister role. Like, I loved that Keely was hyping her up on the red carpet. Let's put one foot in front of the other, yeah? And if you put your hand on your hip, I'll make like a claw shape. It's the most flattering. Rebecca, give us a smile. Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. Oh, look at her. She's fucking fat. <laughs> that was one of the cutest moments on the step and repeat. She's hyping her up and then went to the photographers and then was yelling go, and yelling. Go. And then you saw, yeah, then you see Rebecca just like smile and get more confident and more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And God knows, you know, she needed that. Yeah, and then at the end of up. that, mm-hmm. 
And then by the end of that, we see Rebecca kind of being a big sister. She didn't have to help her. No. Rebecca didn't have to say anything to her. But I think after being there with shitty Rupert and doing all that, I don't think she felt like, wow, I, I don't feel like I can not say something. Yeah. And I just saw it as like, wow, she's being like a big sister. Which, and then giving re, giving Keely that strength and that perspective to say, no, see you later. This is not it for me. And I love that. I was like, yes, bitch, go. Like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. <laughs> Leave him. Throw the whole man away. Like, I was here for it. And I love that Bonnie is here tonight because for those listening and watching, she almost canceled on us. She wasn't feeling it. She rallied and showed up. And I didn't want to send the message that I really wanted her here because I wanted her insight onto this episode. Because it's different than what Mark and I bring. We don't have that female insight. We do not have that big sister role. We don't have that. So very much welcome. Very much happy that you are here tonight. Well, thank you. Yeah, there's there's already there's already the nicest thing you've ever said to me. There's already enough bearded white men talking about movies and TV on the internet. Mm Mm-hmm. There's too many of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. For people not watching too many this, Bonnie actually bearded, is a like white bearded that. man, but she's just a very good voice actor. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Which which one's we her real voice? You don't Bonnie know. Truly is. Unless you're watching the video. There's yes, there's no way to tell. We don't know. There's no way to tell unless, you're, no way unless you're watching the video. So you might have to go to ripmanwaypod.com and find out. If you're not watching this, because you're then, cute faces. There you go. Even then, is that really Bonnie's real voice? Does Bonnie I'm know really what her, her real voice is anymore? <laughs> Damn it, Mark! You said we weren't going to talk about <laughs> I, that. I said the quiet part. You know I'm struggling with that. That's it's, it's just a full existential crisis now. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you subscribe can you tune in to see my full existential crises on the air. It's great. You can chart it from this episode to the end of season three of Ted Lasso. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Let's do it. And But yeah. Th- this isn't really... <laughs> Throw the whole man away, Keely. Throw him away. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. No worries. I was going to say, I this excited. isn't really... I wanted to segue, but it's... I don't want it to make it feel like it is connected because it's not connected. Um, but like with when Ted is uh, leaving his house, like in this episode two, and he's on his his phone leaving a voicemail uh, for his wife, and you can you can see or kind of like sense that he's like almost nervous in the way like he's trying to like himself with the way like he's phrasing certain things and like kind of tiptoeing around stuff and. And then, like, as, he's editing his words, yeah, like, mm-hmm. like real time. And then, yeah. like, even as he like goes to like say that he, he kind of catches that like mid uh, sentence and changes it to saying that he misses her instead. So it's I thought that mm-hmm. was kind of and like another little interesting insight into like what they're slowly kind of revealing about like Ted and his marriage, like so far, like in this first half of like the the first season. Yeah. No, that is a segue. We're talking relationships, 100%. It it explores all of them. Yeah, I thought that was well done and very well acted. Just to be able to deliver that line and not... And make it look truly in the moment, even though he's planning. But that's the default ending to the phone calls. And then when that's not anymore, and he has to edit that... That looked very genuine. Like, duh, he's an actor. He's good. Well, duh, we know that. But, like, just from that perspective, that was so well done. I just want to say, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was nominated quite well, a few you know. times for, for that part. Probably yeah. three. I just thought that was really well done, well written, well acted. Maybe Believable. Maybe yep. Maybe four. If, yeah, if, if they come back. <laughs> Who's to, who's to say? Uh, no, but I that was a really that was really good to bring that up. Yeah, okay. and it's it's it you you do wonder, like oh hmm hmm hmm, but it is revealing more, and very well done in that regard. Yeah, it's. But were they playing phone tag, 
or was it or intentional? Is it, or is it like one sided awesome. tag? Right. Mm hmm. Or was she just uh, seeing her uh, couple's therapist? She's sending the, him to voicemail. That will, that will meet much later on. Forwarding mm -hmm. him to Forwarding. voicemail. Ah, yeah. damn it, Mike. You're beating me at this. Oh! I think the duration is real. Oh, man. Yes, no, yes. and it, it's, yeah. I, I think this episode is very much about, like, those personal relationships and seeing that, I think, is really, it's very subtle. It, it's not, they don't devote a lot of time to that because it's not centered around that. But I thought that was well done to put that in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, and I think, yeah. Like, it's, it's not even, it's kind of like under layered, like layered a little slightly beneath, like the music closing the episode out near the end, too, to kind of like jump around here. Um, but like you hear, jump him, around. <laughs> Jump around. This isn't a house of pain. Jump up, um, up to get down. Where he's telling Beard that uh, that his his wife and his son are coming that next week to to visit, mm -hmm. which is it was just like mm -hmm. a setup for uh, the which next episode for the fifth episode of Tan Lines. Uh, but we'll get to that mm -hmm. one when we get to it, and <laughs> that one we ha we do have a guest uh, for that one. That that was the first person that asked when we when we were doing. Uh, said we were going to do this. That was the first person to ask to come on the show, and that was the episode that they asked to come on. So when the episode comes, we'll see who that person is. So he's um, going to be there whether we're here or not. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he'll <laughs> maybe he'll be by himself. Um, but yeah, and like he's he's capable. He could do yeah, it. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll just have to. It'll be a monologue, not a podcast. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and the the other thing that I liked in here too is. I've said a few times that like Sam is like ends up becoming like one of my favorite characters. But one of the the things that I liked a lot in this episode too was kind of dear Sam again too. Like everyone is coming to the benefit, uh, like to raise money and everything as the different players are going through and posing or whatever in front of the photographers. Sam just stands there and just is like. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you guys so much for taking my picture. Uh, what are your names? So, like, even taking his pictures, and then he asks, and he asks all, all the photographers their names and stuff, because that, that's like a Sam thing to do. And I just thought that was cool. That, like, he's like, well, it shows how he still, in my, in my mind, is fairly juvenile. Like, he's not hardened to the world. He's still positive. He's still. Mm -hmm. A baby, if you will. Like he's being polite. That. Whereas then you have the contrast to Jamie, who's like, "This is what you really want." Right eyebrow, left eyebrow, confused face. Like Sam's just happy to be there. It's so exciting to him. Yeah. Which I was just a good character develop plot trait for him good moment like mm -hmm. everyone else is like isaac colin all of them are showboating for the camera and sam's just like oh my god what's your name what's your name mm -hmm. like sam is just he's the innocent just Him one and Nate, the yeah. innocent. Mm -hmm. there's just some that they are so they're just so good and so golden that you just want to protect them with your lives yeah, that would that's absolutely how I feel about Sam. And I remember texting one of my best friends. I was like, please tell me I'm not going to hate him because I don't want to. And she's like, no, you're good. I went, okay, because I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah, Sam's awesome. So, yeah, I'm sorry, foreshadowing. What, for, oh, 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 I did oh. it accidentally. <laughs> at, at almost 40. She did the thing. 44 minutes into the episode. 40. Talked about Sam. We, have, we were just lamenting we about haven't... Sam. You already talked about uh -huh. the, the growth and of talking... Keely Rebecca friendship. Oh. Uh huh. And then the, the last know, person yeah. we didn't mention was how Grandpa Roy is over the cameras, complete opposite end of the spectrum. And now, mm -hmm. maybe I don't know. Maybe you guys do know. Maybe you don't know. Is this a dirty gesture in oh, England? Yeah. Okay. So this is the peace sign. And then this is the, the middle finger in the U.S. I don't know if 
if YouTube is a thing against if that. If you I flip don't. it. So this, if you have it straight up, that is, this is the F word, and then this is the word you. So Awesome. Yeah. You know where so I learned that? Sign off and I go like this all the time. Yeah, so awesome. you're, you're telling everybody to F <laughs> off. <laughs> you're like, I'm well, not, that's in character. Yeah. I'm not changing my ways. Bonnie, did you learn that no. from the Cornetto trilogy? No. Okay. I learned it. I learned it from Hot Fuzz, where he's like jog, or he's like jog on, and goes. Jog on. I learned I, it from an episode of Buffy, Buffy the Vampire, the Vampire Slayer. Slayer. There you go. Yeah. Okay. With a British vampire. A British it... vampire. I feel like all vampires are That's, usually British. See. Not on that show. That makes sense since it was in America. But, but Anthony sparkly? Stewart Head helped the actor who was American who played that vampire with his accent. So it got better throughout the series. <laughs> nice. So fun he fact. paid it forward. That's where I learned that. Yeah. Forward. Uh, yeah. So Roy. So Roy. So Roy. There's a lot of stuff here with Roy, too. Yeah. He's this kind is also of... the episode where I loved him, was this one. <laughs> True. I can, I definitely, mm -hmm. I got there sooner, but this one was definitely one that kind of cemented it more because he has, um, he takes on the leadership role almost yeah, unknowingly as a character. Well, right now he mm -hmm. technically still, is like the captain of the right team, but he, I don't think he would have sat at that table if this was episode one with Jamie, he would not have done that. He would have just walked away. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doesn't know, Granted, but he's he already did, getting he, chipped away at by, by Ted and Beard. There. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he has no problems giving Keeley the business for using him as a pawn. Yeah. I, I, and there's a little, there's something, something, something brewing with those yep. two. Yeah. You got little hints of that going on. Um, Cause mm -hmm. that when he tells her he doesn't like it and whatever he says, exactly. And one of the things with Roy, the exchange between, between them is oh. she, she that's like the moment she was like that's what i want yeah i am done with these 23 year old footballers like i need someone who's going to be accountable and hold me accountable yeah yeah being accountable matters yeah i like and i like that keely like actually like, for those says listening that, at home. says that to jamie um mm -hmm. and one of the, the things i liked in this yeah. though too like involved roy was um we can talk about Nate a little bit more too after this, but we're like Nate. <laughs> Some great Nate moments. In Nate this like gets up like right yep. up next. To, he's like, <laughs> "What are you doing?" He's like, "Why is your face so close to my face?" He's like, "I was going to hug you and then chickened out at the last second. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks for talking to Colin and Isaac. Why is your face so close to mine? Well, my initial plan was to hug you, but I just chickened out just now. All right. Okay, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he thinks, or, or Nate thinks Roy for essentially sticking up for him to to Colin mm -hmm. and Isaac. Because right now, Colin and Isaac still kind of suck too, because they're heavily under the influence yeah. of Jamie still at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and they're then. tired it up. Yeah. So I, I like that like little bit of a growing relationship there too with with Roy and Nate as well too, and to the segue from like that we're not done with the talk about Roy, but like to segue from that bit to Nate a, a little as well as because we talked about uh, Ted bringing Nate to the benefit as his plus one, uh, and like as a date, yeah, and they're gonna as sit at table date. eight. Uh, is that when he no when he shows up he's like i kind of split the difference between showing up late and showing up early he's like but well, i think you, you nailed it you, right thre there. Uh, but, you threaded that needle perfect or he's got this he's like you are you, do you like friends that, that tell you when you when you have broccoli in your teeth <laughs> and he's like yes he's like well, that suit does not fit you at all uh, so this is the episode where ted gifts uh nate a suit that is then the suit that whenever you see nate in a suit at least at least through season, I think at least somewhere through mid season two, uh, it's it's going to be this suit that Ted bought for him, uh, just because of how much he 
he cherishes that that friendship and kind of like mentorship with Ted there. So, uh, well, I just put that together. I must have missed that part in my first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well, they don't show. Cool. They don't show it. They just kind of like there's like a leading line to it, and then the next time he shows up. Uh huh. And and like my brain's putting it together. Now. Yeah, even like, missed that you the look, first time You look around. great. Like in the in that suit, like you look. So your brain is forming the connection. Yeah, and then yeah, like and then Nate tries to tell the Nate tries to tell a Ted joke, and he's like, "Oh, the only other suit I had was my naked uh, baby body." And he's like, "Well, hmm. he's like, well, it was it better. better it, 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 yeah, it was better when Ted said he's like, well, yeah, usually you want to say birthday suit there." <laughs> so, well, and then the strut. Don't no, you don't strut. You let the suit do the work. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, no, Nate. Like we said, there, there. This has, there, it's kind of a very contained episode, but like, there's a lot of building and forward. Mm -hmm. Not forward much happens, but a lot happens. Momentum mm -hmm. in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of character stuff that's really good, and you just, it just makes you love some of them. Mm -hmm. And I also enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, Ted made a Toy Story reference in this, uh, <laughs> just because. And then Nate tried. We to were tying it. it together. Yeah. Let's see. Ted, Ted is an animation fan. Uh, he hasn't talked about other animated stuff in this yet, but spoiler they do alert! Watch Iron Giant. Yeah, I was gonna say spoiler alert. Eventually, the Iron Giant shows up. So he is he is he is a fan Great of film. the medium of animation. So uh, I I am and glad. musical theater. Yeah. Does he have a fascination? I don't. With he, the animation? he may have an animation fascination. Who's to say? Perhaps. Yeah. Who's to say? He might want to go to the animated podcast uh, com for that if he has an animation fascination. Anyways, um, forward. moving forward, yeah, onward, uh, onward. Yes. So then we get Rebecca's nerves are on full blown high alert because the public speaking thing. Ted's trying to calm her down. She gets on stage and starts going, and who interrupts? Oh, the man we yeah. talked about a lot so far. Ruben. Really quick, be before she goes up there, I like the scene before this, like where they're they're talking, like in that hallway, and he's like, mm -hmm. "Usually, the thing you want to do is you, you want to make fun of yourself." Oh, yeah. make fun of yourself. And, and, and she's what like, "All say? right, Ted, Ted, what would you say?" And then he like comes back. And he's like, "No, here's a little trick of the trade. Just make fun of yourself right off the bat. A little joke. Folks will love that." Okay, so what should I make fun of myself about? Right, 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 right. Um, you know, I, oh, I know a bit, I, uh, no, I, okay. You're um, not going to walk into that one, are you, Ted? Uh, no, ma'am. Nope. He walks away. Yeah, comes walk back he's, like, he's like, nope, 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 <laughs> never mind. Mm -hmm. But then, I've yeah, like when she does, she does make fun of herself, and, and he's like, <laughs> just like the, the double thumbs up. Mm -hmm. After a comedy show, the opener, was down on himself because he made a joke that he looked like Jesse Pinkman or something like that. And the crowd didn't get it. And Aww. I was like, well, and I was like, you, you got to realize you're where you are. Nobody knows who the hell Jesse Pinkman is. Cause they have not watched breaking bad. They won't for 20 years because that's when it'll be new to them. That's like, that's yeah. how far behind they are. And he goes, okay, what you said? I was like, I would have told you to say, I look like clean kid rock. And he just like looked at me and then the headliner, Jeff die. I'm going to name drop was like, you just insulted him pretty hardcore and you don't even know him. I was like, he wanted a funny joke. I gave it to him. And just like, that was my experience with someone doing that and, and me insulting them without caring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that... Poor word. I mean, I know that you you were the one that said stand-up, Mike, but I was going to say, I feel like that is what most comedians do is like, you have to self-deprecate self well, your, yeah, yourself be before... You, you make the joke about yourself before somebody else can do it as like a form of like mm -hmm. shielding... It's got to be obvious, though. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It can't be subtle. Yeah. Isn't that something Tyrion Lannister said? Except it wasn't humor. It was just like, yeah, I can say these things. You know, I know it's a different show. Oh, yeah. But great Peter Dinklage it, moment. Know. Okay. Well, uh, overall. <laughs> um, but it's a great Peter Dinklage moment where he says in character, like, yeah, you can. I'm going to say what I am so you can't use it against it me. It's great. comes full circle yet again. Full uh, circle. <laughs> An off-air conversation has come full circle in a way. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. 
Boy. Elf is a great movie. <laughs> yeah. You're beyond, but you're beyond yeah, now. it it. it... <laughs> We're gonna take some little yeah. steps here and move forward. Move forward. No, I think that's yeah, that is the thing in comedy though, for sure. I do a lot of comedic commercials and stuff, and I teach a comedy class and voiceover, but that's something we specifically, you can talk about and use that, yeah. And that just doesn't, and it's Ted meaning well. Yeah. And he wants whether help, it works but he's also, not. like, respectful at the same time. It's true. Exactly. Exactly. And I think he's far more willing to make fun of himself versus somebody yeah, he, else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very much so. He's, build, he's a builder-upper, not a taker-downer. Exactly. And I think we really needed, as much as I loved how great Keely was for her, for Rebecca's self-esteem in this, it was Ted being there for her in a completely different way to validate it. Not just, I'm going to make you feel better. Yeah, girl, I'm going to hype you up. Listen, drunk girls in the bathroom are your best hype girls you will ever, ever have. <laughs> Drunk girls in the bathroom. If you're a drunk girl in the bathroom, drunk girls, I got yelled at to get out. Exactly. But if well, I, I will say, when you're a drunk girl in the bathroom and you're like, "Do I look okay?" Drunk girls like, "Oh my god, Queen, you look great!" Like they are the best hype girls you will ever ever have in your life. And that's kind of what Keely was for Rebecca in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Was like, "Let's go get drunk. I want to make you feel better." But to me, Ted validated her yeah. versus just make you feel better he's like no i see your pain and i I, mm -hmm. I see you and i'm validating what you're going through and i think you need both of those things yeah like uh, like that whole scene with like them outside like with the like the rickshaw and which apparently i guess uh like fun easter egg fact is that the the two people in that rickshaw that we see are the onset stands for Jason Sudeikis, and Rebecca, or yeah, not Rebecca, <laughs> and Hannah Waddingham. Um, so, Amazing. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. It's like they don't like they don't get in the rickshaw, but tech, like a stand-in version. They do. Of, like, get in the rickshaw and do leave. Uh, so it's kind of like a funny, cool, like a thing there. But, Yay, stand-ins! Love that for them. I end up, I I end up doing that a lot when I'm working. Okay, there's a professional stand-in. Yeah. But yeah, not a non-credited stand, stand in. Uh, but <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I really liked this like scene too with Rebecca and and Ted. Uh, and yeah. Like, like just like like her like kind of fully opening up with about how like Rupert essentially made her feel and like belittled her like the entire time they were together. Uh, which says she doesn't want to alone. Uh, and Ted mm -hmm. hugs her and then she like actually reciprocates. It's like she's like, at, like actually reciprocating it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even not, We're seeing her the real her yeah. in a way, like not the who I want to be, who I think the yeah. world needs me to be. Not the strong facade. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's that I'm not fine, mm -hmm. and now you can see that. Yeah, like we're we're it's beautiful. Kind of getting more of like the the real Rebecca at this point, not like the hard shelled like kind of the defense that she's putting up of herself mm -hmm. and then like ted like even like yeah. offers for them to jump in the rook she's like you want to get in and get the hell out of <laughs> sleep um, but yeah like that i i'm i don't know why, but like that scene like kind of like made me like tear up a little bit too i don't know why it did yeah <laughs> like because it's real yeah it's like because it's real and it's good writing and it's good acting. Yeah, Hannah Waddingham does a, a, like an amazing job. In the show. Again, earned all of the nominations that she did for for the show. And but yeah, because that's not an easy character to be, to, and especially somebody I imagine to write for, but to play somebody who's going through something, and you have to have that wall up for so long but then you have to find the moments where you you drop it and you're vulnerable and that's hard for her that she does it so well and it's those little moments where it's like oh there she is because we see Rebecca in the beginning and it's like man she's doing stuff makes me not want to like her but like I swear by the end of this you see 
a lot more, like you guys said, of who she really is. And you're like, oh, I love her. Like if you couldn't realize before where it was coming from, you understand it now. After meeting her shitty ex, you go, oh, okay. Oh, this that makes, makes sense. <laughs> exactly. And for her to open up to somebody and to open up to the person she was trying to have she was trying to make his i mean make his life hell in a way you know like it, it, inadvertently hell just more embarrassed the team at his at his expense yeah yeah and now she's opening up to him and truly and genuinely it's a beautiful moment it's i think it's one of the the i just think it's a great great scene and how can you not get emotional watching that mm -hmm. Yeah. everybody's felt alone and you when you have a friend that's like hey i'm here for you and they validate you it's one Powerful of the best things things yeah yeah, yeah. forward not to interrupt that nice no. moment well but i mean I the, we have a hard stop it is a good up. it is a good segue uh, to like the next thing too with like Roy the auction uh, well well within yeah within the auction and kind of like what happens as the end of things that happen within the, the auction, be like we end up seeing like Roy going up to Jamie and offering advice to him uh, near like the end of the episode too no I know I should pass to you you're so selfish and arrogant every time I do it makes me want to fucking puke you know, I had the poster of you on my wall when I was a kid. Um, like Jamie told mm -hmm. like a poster of him, which, spoiler alert, mm -hmm. we will see that poster uh, on his wall as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and like we kind of see mm -hmm. this all its glory. Uh, frenemy brotherhood relationship kind of starts to starts to have its roots a little bit here. It's not, you know, it's not fully forming here yet, but you can kind of see where it'll go a little bit from here later on which i, I like mm -hmm. i like seeing like these little things that that we know will kind of bear fruit like in the in the story um and, mm -hmm. and related to that too like what you're talking about earlier with um keely and rebecca in uh the women's restroom where keely says uh that she's essentially leonardo dicaprio because she's 30 <laughs> dating a 20 Mm -hmm. Well, she's been since she was twenty three. She's dating a twenty three year old footballer. Yeah, be still dating a twenty three year old, uh, which I thought was funny. Which I th I think that's funny, like how mm -hmm. that's become like a joke, like just like within pop culture now for people to essentially like rag on Leonardo. Gabriel. Funny or disturbing? Well, not disturbing from the the joke point, but more <laughs> that it's like become such a point of reference within pop culture to be like Leonardo DiCaprio only dates people that are 25 or younger. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that like, that's just such like a readily like known, I guess mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. that's what the joke is. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, th I thought that was kind of like just Keely calling herself Leonardo DiCaprio. I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. And, and then also like us seeing Higgins, um, like getting loose, I'm gonna dance for a later in the substitute. Hey, but beard, a little bit of beard, uh, beard after hours, beard dancing on on the the dance floor here too. It's people cutting yeah. loose. Higgins. It's great goes all out he wants he, that's truly who he wants to be but he's also indebted himself to rebecca to do her bidding because of his need for penance yeah for what he did to her yeah so it's nice to see it's good it's good to see that side of him because it makes you like him it makes you be like feel for him and he's so fun. He's great mm -hmm. with the comedy. Oh God, he's just the cell phone thing was great in this. Mm -hmm. Which I wonder. I, I'm curious to know if that was a one take, nailed it, or if a... yeah, because the stuff on here is just 
Although, like, they do stuff like with that Higgins, with like Higgins, like, just, like dropping the other stuff. So it might just be that Jeremy Swift is good at like physical comedy like that. Um, or, or it could just be like happy accidents where it's like he did almost just drop his phone and then caught it very haphazard, haphazardly and well there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, this auction starts off with some flair where uh, there's a bidding war for Jamie Tart, which we find out later was planned by him. But you kind of see mm -hmm. a jealous side of Keeley open, like, wasn't expecting, kind of... wasn't expecting that from her. She kind of felt grounded in her, who she is. But then this happens and you're like, oh, that's interesting that I would, it was just something I didn't expect the first time watching it. And even this time around, it's like, I still, even though I know what happened, it just doesn't seem like her character would have done that in my brain, but. Right. Mm. Yeah. And then fun fact. She's so sure yeah. of herself and so. Where we see Bex for the first time too. True. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't remember that she was somehow tangentially connected to Jamie here. Which, like, we see her leave with Rupert, but Bricka says that, that she was Jamie's other plus one, and if he set mm. that up. So I just thought that was interesting. Because I don't, I, I mean, I guess we'll see, but I don't remember, like, that being a thing where, like, she was somehow tangentially connected to, to Jamie at all. Just in this particular moment, I feel. Yeah. Because you have somebody, you know, Rupert behind the scenes doing things. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't he do that? If he had enough power to text what's his nuts. What? <laughs> yeah. What's his nuts? Another good four letter <laughs> word. Yep. Um, what is it? Robbie Williams. Um, yeah. You think I'd at least get the last name. Um, you know, no offense to anybody that loves Robbie Williams. Please don't hurt me. Uh, I just forgot his name. It's been a very long day. Um, if he had enough power to text him to come, he had enough power to text him to not come to it. Right. So who's Great to say? Great revelation by Ted. Mm-hmm. Right. When Ted says, you know, you're not the only person that sees him for who he yeah. is. Like, yes. Again, validating her. Yeah. She just wants to be validated. Yeah. Because you got to figure all the other guys look at him as like, that's the man I want to be. And mm -hmm. Ted is just like, you suck. But I won't mm -hmm. ever say that to your face. I'm going to smile and I'm going to do that like Southern polite thing. Mm -hmm. But I see you exactly for who you are. And he, he says that to him on paper. You're just like, oh, okay. But the delivery, it's very subtle, but it's what sells it 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But because of that, you get to see Cam Cole. Who's great? Which, Who is, is he fame? I just like, I don't know if that's a real famous musician or just someone cast for this. If you guys can we'll shed some light on that, maybe I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. I, I was just like, not, oh, good for him. I'm not hip. I'm not with it. I don't know the four one one. Four one one. Well, I thought he was great, and again, he like was. Rebecca took a big chance on Ted, just saying, "I got a guy." <laughs> Yeah. Cool. And she's and just, just like, like, you know Ted what? To just like go pull someone off the street and, and sees hold, the hold potential in them. Yeah. yeah. Sees the greatness in them and takes a big chance on that person. Cause lift her upper. Yeah. I just, I definitely, I need to say, I know we briefly talked about it uh, and it's kind of that foreshadowing with, with Keely and, and Roy and everything like this, this episode with that little, I went, okay, I get it. Do me a favor. Don't use me as a prop in your little fights. Make me feel like an idiot. I'm sorry. I... I shouldn't have done that. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I was like, I get it. Because at first it didn't make sense to me when I first watched the show. I didn't quite get that. But again, yeah. I was missing parts. But during this yeah. watch, I went, oh, no, I get it. I 100% get it. I understand that scene and how she, like, she, how she like she looks at him like, wow, like you just told me I was wrong. 
And that's cool. I accept that. And that's just that moment of like, wow, accountability. We like this for each other. Interesting. But that scene just made me look at them and go, I see it. I see it. And I I, I get it too. So. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good stuff. And, and, then, like, and yeah. the Rupert putting his coat on Vex. You oh. see Beard and Jane break up for the one of many times. Yeah. And Keely and Rebecca ride off in the sunset in the rickshaw. If you had a, if you asked somebody after this episode, if you were watching this and you saw all of these people in this episode, you're like, which of these groupings of people do you think will be the couple that gets married by the end of this, this show? Which one would you say it was? I do not think Roy you would Keely. say, yeah, I was, was going to say, I do not think you would say it is, spoiler alert, Beard and Jane. But we will get to that when we get to that. Yeah, no. Uh, I would have said Roy and Keeley too, yeah, 100%. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go to that wedding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I did think that was going to be the moment watching this, like the first Ted Becca moment was in this episode where I thought yeah. there was a spark between them. Yeah. So soundtrack. Still not sold on that. Still not sold on Ted Becca yet. Maybe by the end of this rewatch, I'll be sold on that concept, but not yet. I, I will say, just kind of foreshadowing ahead for myself, that I wasn't really like seeing that until we get to season two, the Christmas episode. That that's still a ways away, from, like on our rewatch. But that's like that's really where like I just started to see that. Uh, but we'll again, we'll get to that when we get to that uh so uh mike you want to want to move to our quotes from this episode i thought you were talking about soundtracks well soundtracks and favorite quotes both, both oh both fine you can do soundtracks is shorter go with your favorite quotes <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, yeah so i scrolled too far on the sheet sorry <laughs> that's all right uh, i was on page four instead of page three so I, I, so I already said some of them, but like, yeah, and we've said like the Nate the Great is going to be my bait, and for obvious reasons, we'd love to be at table eight. So, got that one. Uh, I also oh, <laughs> got this great Ted on here. For me, locker rooms are a lot like my mom's bathing suits. I only want to see them in one piece. Um, <laughs> um, and then you know how the youth is wasted on the young? Well, I say, I don't let the wisdom of age be wasted on you. Thought of that. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, and then I was like, can I get a uh, and a single and one triple? These are all Ted lines, by the way. So, yeah. Kind of, and then, uh, you know, a lot of talk think, this yeah. And then, you know, you may think you're the only one who can see who he really is, but you're not. Yeah. So those are all favorite quotes. What are yours, too? I didn't write any down. No. <laughs> Mike, do you want to take one of mine? I mean, you guys you have speak? covered every one I would have taken. So, I I liked when Rebecca said she looked she uh was crying and she's like I look like Robert Smith when he's woken up from a nap. Nice. I thought I, that I was that great. Line. I wish I did hear it because it is a good line. I thought that was just a great little bit of levity in that scene. Just it, the show is so good at like here's something sad and heartfelt. Let's just add a little humor. I think that was yeah. a great moment for that. Um, and then when Keely tells Rebecca, it's okay, you are a bit judgy. <laughs> it's like, that's great. And then uh, oh, Rebecca's quote, everyone makes mistakes, but I was married to a man for 12 years who never took one, who never once took responsibility for any one of them. That is so great. And that advice to Keely, like, I could be you. You could be me. Learn from my choices. Big sister. That's what that was. And then being accountable matters. Like, yes. Pass it on. Should be on a Throw away the whole man. Throw it oh. away. Throw him away. And then... So soundtrack. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, soundtrack. Uh, yeah, the Camp Cola. If we're, if we're just not, you know, we're not, like, with the, the cool kids and we don't know who Camp Cola is please tell us i guess in the comments uh help us but, help you yeah I, help I thought, us be cool <laughs> yeah but 
Not not Cole. According to Wikipedia, he's a musician. There you go. Oh. Solved it. Thanks, thanks Wikipedia. Thanks. Uh, then yeah, I like all this mention of Robbie, not Robin Williams, Robbie Williams uh, within this episode. So of course, and the episode's also called for the children. So the closing credits song is the song "Kids" by Robin Williams, Robbie. Robin Robbie Williams. and Kylie Minogue. So I thought that was. I like how they even they they kind of do this like metatextual like layering of like usually their closing credits songs are some kind of reference to some kind of story element from earlier in the episode or whatnot. So I just I always appreciate that with for shows or movies. Oh yeah, all, all my stuff. Oh, I got. Oh, I got. Yeah. So on that note, we will finish up. For all those of you keeping tab at home, we let us know how many fours way. you counted. So... And uh, got her again. we can try and count <laughs> ourselves, but we're bad. We're bad at math here. We, we we're bad, bad at mad. At... That's right. So thank four you for plus listening. Four equals four. One, one and one don't make one. One and one don't make two. One and one make one is the line. But anyways, for... you can find us here on this show. You can find me just about anywhere. If you look for my name, just make sure you find the one with the J in it. RichmondWaypod.com if you're looking for us. Other side. I'll just cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> this is for everybody watching. That's right. It was a great conversation. Great talk, you guys. Love the episode. Love this episode. Look forward to the next one. Yeah. And if anyone forgot, Kenny's here next next time. For the oh, that's right. We have Kenny, data Chief Data Scientist Madison, on the next one. From Trek Wars Pod and what is, the, what is this other one called? The Lasso Cast? Yep. Yep. The Lasso Something like cast. that. Well, is this still verified. part of the episode right now? Or are we still? Is this still part still of the recording. episode? Oh, we're still recording. Yeah. Okay. I, I I thought you closed it out already, so I didn't know. No. <laughs> All right. Nope. This is gold. All right. Well, but that was me being onward, confused, everybody. Forward. So. Forward. How many is that now? Okay, we'll go count. I don't have that many fingers and toes. Hopefully, it's like forty-four. That'd be great. Anyways, it's eight oh four. So it's eleven. Somebody had to go out the door at four. Not be here I'm gonna anymore. Hit the floor. <laughs> so I will say no more. So we're yep, no more. <laughs> so until next time, folks, be curious, not judgmental, and keep rewatching. This is Ted Lasso signing off. As the man once said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. <laughs>